morning, all. And welcome to the ninth ministerial of the meeting of the Community of Democracies. It's really an honor for us to host this ministerial here in Washington in the United States for the first time. And so welcome to all of you, and we're just delighted that you are here. I also want to congratulate Thomas Garrett on his new role as Secretary General of the Community of Democracies. He is an excellent choice to hold this position at this very important time. And thank you, Secretary General, for your dedication to leading this organization and for defending democracy. We're grateful to the foreign ministers, uh, the government delegations, members of civil society, as well as business leaders, and most particularly, the young people who have traveled from around the world to be with us today. Thank you for making the effort uh, to, to join us. The collective efforts of those in this room to defend dem democratic progress and resist anti-democratic trends are deeply appreciated. And the United States is proud to participate in this shared work that we're all about. We know that this ministerial could not come at a more critical moment. Across the globe, democratic nations and peoples are under threat. In East Asia, an increasingly aggressive and isolated regime in North Korea threatens democracies, democracies in South Korea, Japan, and more importantly, and more recently, has expanded those threats to the United States, endangering the entire world. In the Middle East, Iran exports terrorism and violence, threatening democracies from Israel to Europe and other regions. In, in other regions, once thriving democracies are retreating from or actively subverting democratic values, such as in Venezuela. And finally, we must support emerging democracies in the struggle to become nations that respect human rights, regardless of ethnicity, such as the case in Burma. The global challenge to the democratic ideal is real. That's why we're here today. That's why this gathering exists. We know that democracy is the form of governance that produces peace, stability, and prosperity at home and abroad. We know that governments that uphold democratic principles and practices are safer, healthier, more secure, more prosperous societies, and are more inclined to respect the human rights of their citizens. Democratic governments are accountable to the people and, as a result, are less susceptible to corruption, more likely to support an independent and fair judicial system, and more likely to peacefully sustain a, a vibrant, diverse society. As a community of democracies, we also know that our shared values translate to more dependable security partners and reliable allies in the fight against terrorism. We know that democracies are not flawless. All of us remain works in progress. Successful democracies require hard choices, hard work, and vigilance. But democracy is the only political system that contains an institutional capacity for self-correction, one that grants its citizens the right to participate in how and by whom they are governed. And that is why we support the expansion of freedom and democracy throughout the world. At a time of growing efforts to undermine democracy, it is all the more critical that we work together to bolster and promote this form of governance. So despite the challenges of our day, now is not the time to step back from our democratic commitments. Now is the time to strengthen and sustain them. We cannot become complacent. Rather, we must continue our active advocacy and engagement. Two months ago, President Trump delivered a speech in the same city where this group is founded and where its secretariat is housed. Before the Polish people, the president reaffirmed this shared commitment to advancing freedom. He said, and I quote, above all, we value the dignity of every human life, protect the rights of every person, and share the hope of every soul to live in freedom. That is who we are. End quote. That is who we are as Americans. In our Declaration of Independence, our founders boldly stated that all are endowed by their Creator with the unalienable rights of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Americans are committed to standing up for democratic principles, practices, 
and our partners around the world. It is not only central to our foreign policy, it is who we are as a people. And it is these shared values that bind us to our closest allies. That is why in every foreign policy challenge we face, we engage our democratic partners first. As we consider the best defense posed by a hostile regime in North Korea, the least free nation on the planet, we first look to our regional allies, South Korea and Japan. By working with them and other democratic partners, we continue to build consensus at the United Nations Security Council to create a united international front that upholds our values and strives to make us safer. But North Korea is now a global threat, and it requires a global response from all nations. In Latin America and the Caribbean, we continue to engage our partners regularly, and particularly through the Organization of American States, as we consider every diplomatic and economic tool to restore Venezuela's democratic institutions. In the Middle East, Iran oversees a threat network of proxies who export terror and violence. They destabilize countries throughout the region. In response, the United States works closely with our allies in Europe and our ally Israel to address these threats while also supporting a strong, more resilient democracy emerging in Iraq. And when countries like Russia threaten their democratic neighbors by attacking the very foundation of our democracies, by meddling in our free and fair elections, we stand with our democratic partners we call for greater vigilance, and we work together to safeguard our democracies from interference in the future. This is who we are as a community of democracies, working to advance our shared democratic principles to create a more free, a more prosperous, and a more secure world. In June 2000, the community of democracies affirmed in the opening lines of the Warsaw Declaration the will of the people shall be the basis of the authority of government, as expressed by exercise of right and civic duties of citizens to choose their representatives through regular, free, and fair elections with universal and equal suffrage, open to multiple parties, conducted by secret ballot, monitored by independent electoral authorities, and free of fraud and intimidation. This belief in and dedication to democracy was once a radical idea, but today, this is who we all are. Today, the Washington Ministerial is the culmination of our tenure as president of the Community of Democracies, but it is also a reaffirmation of the importance of the Community of Democracies and our commitment to the democratic ideal at a time when freedom needs defending. With growing attacks on civil society, threats to judicial independence, the undermining of effective democratic institutions, and disrespect for the citizens who are central to democracy's success, it is even more important for our nations and for us as individuals to reaffirm our commitment to the Warsaw Principles. The values and the principles we espouse lead to greater security and more prosperity. As we work together to protect our values, promote democratic institutions, and increase our resolve against the undemocratic regimes that threaten them, we all will be guided by these shared values. So to conclude, let us together, government and civil society, do all that we can to live up to and be an example of the Warsaw Principles, to live up to the principles of democratic governance, and to do so for future generations and a more peaceful, prosperous, and secure world. I thank you for your kind attention. And now.